Y'all make some noise up in this doggone place today. What's going on, good people? Now, I would have much rather been here going to a party or something with you all, but here we are doing what we got to do because we know what we got to do. Y'all still feeling that right out there? Now, you also know you can't have no Southern black woman come up here and not try to put something on the mic. So can y'all repeat after me a little bit? Can y'all sing a little bit with little sister today? We must fight for freedom. We must fight for freedom. We must fight for justice. We must fight for justice. It will take all of us to get to the other side. Now y'all sung that like you didn't know it the first time. We gonna sing it again, and we gonna try to put a little bit more energy into that. All right. We must fight for freedom. We must fight for justice. It will take all of us to get to the other side. All right, all right, all right. Y'all did pretty good. Good afternoon, y'all. We have showed up once again doing what we got to do because we know what's most important for ourselves and for our communities. And so I just want you all to give yourselves a round of applause for being in this space today and showing up in the midst of it all today. I want to give mad love to the Freedom Fighters in Mississippi today. We're going to keep giving love to them on the ground, doing their thing for their community. We are here because of them, and we have to continue to give love back to them. So can we give a round of applause again for our Freedom Fighters in Mississippi today? And for each and every storyteller that came up to tell their story in the midst of it all, as we are seeing all of this come against us, their bravery, their ability to stand here and tell their stories is powerful. It is revolutionary. So can we give a round of applause to every single storyteller who has given their story on this platform today? I want to make some complaints to y'all, just in case you didn't know that this fight for abortion justice is a fight against white supremacy. There is nothing more, quote unquote, American, is it, than black folks and folks of color having to fight to survive in this damn country. There is, we know that these particular laws impact our communities, black folks, indigenous folks, folks of color. Uh, Y'all, it takes us over. And it takes over our communities in such a detrimental way. And so it takes us moving our leadership to the front in this moment to ensure that our communities are heard, that our voices are heard, that our experiences are heard and seen. And we are going to have to continue to do that every single day until liberation is ours, good folks. Now, our bodily autonomy is central to our liberation. If our freedom to make decisions about our own health and bodies are denied, we as a people are not fully liberated. And I don't know about you all, but I am interested in seeing liberation in my lifetime. You feel me? And reproductive justice has taught me that it is our human right to be able to have the children in the ways that we want, to be able to prevent and end pregnancy without shame and with dignity, to be able to parent our children in healthy and safe environments, to have the bodily autonomy that is ours, and that to me, good people, is liberation. Anti-abortion laws are not pro-life. I really want to snatch that word from these people who are trying to hold on to pro-life because they are not pro-life. These anti-abortion laws are not pro-life, they are pro-white supremacy, good people. That's what they are. And these laws that are rooted in white supremacy are downright unjust. And states that continue to implement and uphold inherently unjust laws that disproportionately target black folks and folks of color are upholding a system that shields white supremacy. In case you didn't know, I'm gonna say white supremacy a lot in this speech, all right? Are y'all all right with that? Because you know that's what we fight. Okay, okay. Now some lawmakers in Mississippi and other places are arguing that states should be able to decide. Sound familiar, right? States' rights in the South is a long-standing argument upheld by white supremacists. They haven't even bothered to come up with anything new. They keep running the same game. 
seen, expecting the same results, but we are here to give them different results today. Courts that continue to codify unjust laws that disproportionately dis target us are upholding a system that we no longer want to give any credit to. And it's going to end today because we are going to continue to do what we need to do to make sure that that thing is gone. Y'all feel me? Y'all feeling me? All right. The facts are facts, y'all. Mississippi is like the third blackest state in the country. But their lawmaking body doesn't even come close to reflecting that at all. Only 27% of their state legislature is black and only 17% identify as woman. Now that isn't democracy, it is white supremacy. Better yet, it's white patriarchal supremacy at its best. So take a look around, good people. Representation matters. When our voices are at the table, our rights and our autonomy are, when our voices are not at the table, but our rights and our autonomy are on the chopping block. So we are using this moment, y'all, to deepen our strategy. We're doing our thing. We're doing our thing. I see y'all all across the country doing your thing. And to show the rest of the country what Black-centered and folks of color-centered leadership actually looks like. So I want y'all to tell you, I want, I want to tell you this. And what, what happens behind those doors, and thank you for Sonia for, for, keep, for keeping the real up in there, but whatever happens behind those doors is what's going to happen behind those doors. What we are focused on is still continuing to win. I want to win. Do y'all want to win? Yeah. We are going to keep our focus on liberation. We will keep taking care of each other and loving and protecting each other. We will keep building our collective power. We will keep voting and holding the vision for freedom in our hearts. We will keep telling our stories and changing the narrative and changing the culture because that is what it's going to take in order for us to move from this defensive position to the offensive position because baby when we get to the offensive position I tell you this our opposition better get ready because we are not stopping once we get the ball do you feel me when we get the ball things are going to change when we get the ball lives will change when we get the ball liberation is ours do y'all feel what I'm saying good people at our center. I know that it's hard when we see all of the things around us, but I just want you to touch yourself just for a moment today. Put your hand on your heart space and remind yourself that you have everything that you need. Remind yourself that we are standing on the shoulders of giants who have done this before us. We are standing together collectively building a power that is going to change the very nature of this country and it's going to take all of us staying connected in order to do that. And so we got to stay connected to love. We got to stay connected to joy because they cannot take that away from us. They cannot take our joy. They cannot take our love. They cannot take the things that are inherently ours. So we have to use it as our power to move us to the position that we want to be in. Are y'all ready for that? Are y'all ready for more winning? Are y'all ready for liberation in our life counts? Then let's keep doing what we gotta do to do what we gotta do. Peace and blessings, everybody. Thank you all so much for your time today. We love y'all.